It's a real honor to be here today with some of the, the foremost heroes of the Me Too movement and the movement in favor of women's rights in the workplace and workers' rights to be free of discrimination and to be free to tell their stories and seek justice and accountability where they've been wronged. Toxic workplaces and predators rely on silence and darkness to persist. And non-disclosure agreements in the context, especially of discrimination, harassment, and sexual abuse, have been one of the foremost tools for robbing survivors of their voices. And when those agreements are used to silence victims and survivors, first of all, we don't learn their stories. Second of all, often they can't seek justice. And third of all, the environments and the predators who poison those environments are allowed to continue and other people are victimized. And so that's why it's so important that people be allowed to speak out about their experiences and are not silenced through this tool of non-disclosure agreements. As someone who's been proud and honored to represent individuals who are victims of uh, harassment and abuse in litigation, I've seen how powerful their voices are and how essential their voices are, not only to tell their own stories and to seek justice and accountability for their own situations, but also to send the message to everyone in every workplace that these situations and these abuses are unacceptable and will not be tolerated and will ultimately result in punishment or other accountability. Uh, we have been able to witness over the past several years how other states like New Jersey and the state of Washington have passed laws, strong laws, to restrict or ban the use of NDAs. And we've also seen, especially in New Jersey, and I'm sure that Gretchen and Julie are going to be talking about this, how one of the main concerns about NDAs, that they might take a tool away from survivors in seeking accountability and justice. Uh, actually, it turns out that that concern is not well founded and that survivors have been able to seek justice to the full extent, um, even with the NDA ban and restriction. And so it's, it's vital now, as much as ever, that we continue our fight against workplace discrimination, harassment, and abuse, and that we do so by strong legislation to end the use of non-disclosure agreements to silence survivors. And I'm proud to stand with all these folks to help do this this year. Individuals can be forced into arbitration virtually at any point, uh, just you know, as a condition of employment when they're coming in the door. And uh, there's been a number of exposés written on the arbitration process itself. Essentially, it's private dispute resolution. And the terms and the forum are determined completely, these are, because these are contracts of adhesion, determined completely by the employer. Um, that means they determine who the judge, in, the private judge in your matter will be. They determine who uh, or what the rules in that matter will be. They determine how and whether you can band together with any other individual to pursue a joint claim. And what that means, first of all, is that you're going to face a stack deck um, when you actually try to pursue justice. It also means you're highly unlikely to get a significant uh, judgment or settlement because, again, the, the, the deck is stacked against you. And what that also also means is that lawyers are unlikely to take your case because most lawyers who do this work uh, do it on a contingent fee basement basis, meaning they're going to get a share of whatever proceeds are won or settled in the case. And so it fundamentally not only undermines the claims and uh, the accountability in the process, but it also fundamentally undermines the whole business model of these people getting representation for their claims in the first place. So it, it basically uh, functions to silence these people and prevent them from getting any accountability in those processes.